What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be testing the O3 Air unit versus the Naked GoPro 11. The Naked GoPro 11 is pretty much the camera that I use on all of my real estate FPV videos, and I'm really curious just how it stacks up against an O3 Air unit, or I'm more so curious how the O3 Air unit stacks up against the Hero 11. So I'm filming at a very large property today. You guys have probably seen, if you follow the real estate series that I do on YouTube, uh, you guys have probably seen the other video that I filmed across the street. It's just a whole behind the scenes video on how I do the real estate FPV videos. But yeah, this is a pretty big house. I think it's going to be perfect for testing this out. Um, the O3 Air unit is in 4K 60, 16 by 9 because that is what I would be using in a real estate environment. And then my GoPro, I'm going to have a whole video going over my GoPro settings. I know you guys are going to ask that in the comments. And then the GoPro is in 4K 60 FPS 8 by 7. That 8 by 7 sensor is really a game changer, especially with how many vertical videos I've had clients ask for. And uh, I don't have to actually physically rotate the camera anymore. So let's go see how this flies. Just so you guys know where I am in this house, because this is a huge house, I'm actually going to be right at the top of the stairs. There's a room with a closet. I'm going to be hiding in there. Got the GoPro on. I love this case. If you guys are interested in this case, I'll leave a link to this video down in the description too. I have a whole video on how to assemble this. All right, so GoPro's recording. Colleen is going to open up the door for the drone. All right. Alright guys, back at the bench and I have to say, I just got done editing the footage, stabilizing it and really looking at everything and I am very impressed with the quality that's out of the O3. Going into this, I really thought that the GoPro was going to be the clear winner, but when you really take a look at the O3 footage, it looks almost equally as sharp as the GoPro 11. All of the footage that you just saw was stabilized through Gyroflow and no color correction was applied. I was surprised that even though the GoPro 11 has the 8x7 sensor, the overall camera view was pretty much the same through the whole thing and nothing major seemed to be cropped out of the O3 view. This was filming in 169 and this was filming in 8x7, so this one technically is a bigger image, but when you run it through the stabilization, it's going to naturally just kind of crop it, and in the end, they looked very, very similar. 
I actually found myself preferring the O3 footage when it was flying outdoors, but then once it flew indoors, I found myself liking the GoPro footage better. Both of these cameras had an ISO max of 800, but the footage from the O3 does seem a little bit contrasty or maybe just a little darker than the GoPro. And I feel like the GoPro is able to just pull out a little more color and a little more detail in the shadows as opposed to the O3. So in my opinion, the GoPro still takes the cake because of that eight x seven sensor, but I do have to say I am very impressed with the overall quality that's coming out of this. I don't know if it was improved in a software update or something, but I'm definitely more impressed with the quality now than when I initially reviewed it a couple months ago. I'll probably film a whole drone tour using the O3 sometime and I'll upload it as a standalone video so we can see what this footage is really capable of looking like. Before I end the video, I know people are going to ask what the setup is. Uh, this is a recent build that I did and this is one of my new backup quads for New England drone tours. This is a 2.5 inch Cinewhip on the QAV Pro 2.5 inch frame. Inside, like I mentioned, we have the O3 air unit that's sitting right on the bottom right here above the O3 air unit. And you might not be able to see this or how tight it is. Actually, yeah, it looks like you can. Right above the O3 air unit, there is just enough space in this frame for this. Uh, this is the all-in-one flight controller and this is an Acon 60 amp F7 and this is capable of 6S. I've got a crossfire receiver mounted to the capacitor right here. You can kind of see it right there. The motors are Diatone Toka 1404, 3000 KV motors. And then the props are my favorite 2.5 inch prop, the Gemfan D63 five blade props. Since this drone is 6S, I am able to use the same batteries that I use on my Pava 25 build. I have an entire drone build video on this, and if you guys want to see that, I'll leave a link to that down in the description, and I'll have a little thing for it right up here. Uh, but I have a whole build video on this, so if you want to learn how to build one of these drones, I have a video on building this one, and this is very similar to this one. Since both are capable of 6S, I can use the same batteries. On this drone, I prefer using the Ovonic 550. This is kind of my go-to battery for this. It's like the perfect size for it. Uh, but this is a 6S battery. I could use this on my Pavo, like I said, but this is my go-to. When I don't have a naked GoPro in here, I get about five minutes, maybe six minutes of flight time when I'm flying indoors. Then again, you have to take into consideration that I'm flying really slow when I'm flying indoors. So if you're outside trying to freestyle around and everything, you're gonna get shorter flight times, but this is my go-to. I get about five minutes flying indoors and uh, yeah, nice little battery. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave the video a like, and if you have any questions about this video, about the O3 Air unit, or about the Naked GoPro, or about this drone in general, leave a comment down below.